All right. Thank you so much. Uh, it's really a privilege to help uh, kick off this first ever uh, DOK Town Hall. Uh, I'm Greg Otto. I'm from Comcast. I lead our DevEx or Developer Experience Platforms team. Uh, with me here today is Charles Zhu. He's one of our engineers and actually makes all the things that I wave my hands about happen. Um, and so today we're going to uh, walk through our journey, uh, both from a technology perspective, uh, but we also want to bring the human perspective, right? So as we go through these transformations for our customers, as well as for our engineers, we wanted to bring uh, both of those perspectives uh, to you. Jump into the next, uh, next slide here. Um, so I don't think this is unique to Comcast, but a lot of times our developers sort of feel like this. And we had a specific challenge, a uh, business critical project where as part of a middle tier, we needed to create a number of uh, data services. And the challenge that we had was that different development teams were uh, creating them themselves. And, and there's like hundreds of these that need to be created. And it was taken over two months and over 300 hours to create a single service. And as you would imagine, they're all artisanally handcrafted. Uh, so we had a cloud full of snowflakes. Um, so then the approach that we took was in order to reduce the cognitive load on our developers, uh, we do that through paved paths that are thoughtfully connected together. And at a high level, our solution uh, couples a low code framework uh, with our DevEx uh, paths. And of course that includes uh, data on Kubernetes. And uh, the outcome from a developer journey perspective is that a developer goes into an interface, they declare some metadata, push go, and then the code is generated, the pipelines are, are created, testing ensues, and then uh, the application and data is deployed in uh, three different regions on our, on our platform, uh, so geo-distributed. Geo um, and so that all happens uh, in about 30 minutes. Okay, so definitely a big uh, improvement there. And so we solved a bunch of different primitives. Uh, I'm not gonna drain it and go over each one of these, but uh, some big parts of this, you know, our global ingress, uh, removing the need for secrets and password management. So that keeps our friends in security and audit happy. Uh, so being able to handle those things automatically for the developers. And then all the database configuration and deploy and connecting and wiring to the applications and solving all of these primitives on behalf of the developers is really what takes a lot of the toil and the time um, you know, out, of that, uh, uh, out of that journey. And then it's also important to note that a uh, lot of goodness for day one, uh, but also all the day two and beyond is also like pretty near free for the developers. So things like scaling those data services, uh, all of upgrades and, and, and things like that, uh, traffic management, that all happens uh, by the platform. So these are some of the outcomes that we've been able to get. We run you know, thousands of, of services on uh, Kubernetes today. Uh, but we're still pretty early in the journey. And uh, this is not trivial. This is hard stuff. And uh, as any tra transformation, it's also uh, a challenge for the human perspectives as well. So we don't want to forget the humans. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Charles. Hey, <clears throat> uh, thanks, Greg. So thanks, everyone, for joining today's uh, uh, hall. So we all know that the Kubernetes technology has been available for many years now, right? But uh, when you're deploying a database on the Kubernetes platform, the majority of the current solutions only allows you to deploy your database on a single site or single cluster. 
So no matter whether it's a Helm chart or, a, or an open source operator, they don't really provide you any capability that which will allow you to deploy your database across multiple Kubernetes clusters. So the problem with this kind of single site or single cluster deployment is that uh, it is really not enough, both from the high availability perspective and from the localized performance perspective. So in case a single site or single site, uh, cluster goes down, your database application will become not available anymore. And uh, for the user perspective, if they can access, access the data from a local cluster, the performance definitely will be much better than access the data from a remote cluster. So we definitely need a geo-distributed orchestration method to deploy our database across multiple clusters. But we don't have a lot of solutions available right now you know, within the Kubernetes community for this kind of multi-cluster deployment. The geo-distributed data on Kubernetes is still relatively an uncharted area. So because of that, because of you know, the lack of the current available solutions, our team have been trying to develop our custom controllers or blueprints for multi-cluster database deployment. In that kind of scenario, the first thing that we needed to solve is a cross-cluster communication or part-to-part -part communication. So we use technology such as like a cluster mesh or service mesh to achieve those kind of cross-cluster communication so that the data running on each part can be replicated to another data running on a different cluster. We also needed to work on external networking so that the application running outside of the Kubernetes cluster can access the database running inside of the Kubernetes cluster. On that front, we use technology such as like a TCP ingress or you know, global DNS resolution. Deploying database, no matter whether you are doing it on a virtual machine environment or on a Kubernetes uh, platform, besides this orchestration piece, it also involves a lot of day two operations. So for example, like database backup and restore. If you don't have a really good back backup mechanism, so in case something happens, you may lose all, your, all of your data. And uh, if you don't have a recovery solution, then your application may suffer an extended downtime if something, you know, disaster happens. So our team have been trying to build all these day two operations into our customer controllers so that we can make sure the database running on our Kubernetes clusters can be backed up safely and restored quickly across multiple Kubernetes clusters in case we need it. The federated observability is also another critical piece for running database on the Kubernetes platform. So in our multi-cluster deployment scenario, that means we have to collect the metrics from different pods running on each different Kubernetes clusters. Then we have to consolidate all these metrics into a federated view so that we can have an over, overlook of the whole deployment across multiple clusters. So these are just some of the major tasks that our team have been building to, for our customer controllers. So this is just like uh, Greg mentioned, right? It's not a trivial you know, solutions. As we all know, the multi-cluster deployment on the Kubernetes is itself is still a relatively an uncharted area. Of course, we have noticed that some of our vendors or partners have been developing their enterprise licensed like operators or controllers for deploying database across multiple Kubernetes clusters. But from our experience, most of those solutions are either still in a developing stage or you know, their design doesn't really uh, meet our requirements. So we have to spend a lot of time and a lot of energy to find the right solution to build our customer controllers so that you know, we can utilize that to do the multiple cluster deployment. Although it's not easy, but we have already made some progress 
we were able to develop like at least like a couple of prototypes, which allow us to deploy the clusters across multiple clusters. But of course, you know, we still have a lot of work to do to make it a, the final version. So although not easy, but we are really excited to make our solutions more generally available as, trusted, as a, the trusted pattern you know, for our team to consume in the future. So we are quite opt opt optimistic you know, about our journey, even though we are still early on our developing, developing stage. So <clears throat> next, uh, next slide is, I'd like to talk a little bit about my personal journey. So just like uh, Greg mentioned. So today I'm here talking about Kubernetes, right? In our Kubernetes town hall. I guess many of you in the audience may think I must have been working on Kubernetes for quite a while, quite a while. So to be honest, you know, believe it or not, for the past 20 years, I actually have been mainly working as a traditional database engineer for various database technologies. I actually didn't have too much Kubernetes knowledge at all. So the first time that I ever got involved into a Kubernetes project was actually back in October 2021. So at that, that time, you know, there was an internal request to orchestrate a graph database across multiple Kubernetes clusters running on our internal cloud platform. So that was really a big challenge for database team and myself at that time, because as I said, you know, we didn't have too much knowledge about Kubernetes at all. And uh, just like we mentioned, the running database across multiple Kubernetes clusters itself is still a challenge. I actually literally started you know, this project by you know, watching tutorials on the internet. But eventually, by working with our vendor support and our internal cloud team experts, we were able to deliver this solution within four months. That actually literally becomes the first geo-distributed database uh, deployment across multiple, multiple Kubernetes clusters you know, within our organization. That was really a good experience for me. And to be honest, it really you know, changed my opinion of running database on Kubernetes at all. Um, but of course, we needed to find better solutions, right? We needed to find easy solutions. We can't always, let's say, spend a couple of months to deploy a database running on multiple Kubernetes clusters. That's why our team have been spending a lot of time and energy to build our custom controllers so that we can deploy our database across multiple clusters. But of course, <clears throat> this is not easy, even from the human pers perspective. As I said, you know, none of the DBAs had a lot of you know, Kubernetes technology. So it's really a big learning curve for all of us to get familiar with this technology. And also, we still have some concerns. For example, you know, we are not 100% convinced that the performance of running large database on Kubernetes clusters can be as good as running them on the virtual machine uh, environment. Although, you know, we had a lot of talks with our cloud team experts, uh, but we still needed to see it to prove that. That's why we're doing a lot of benchmarkings and the stressful test to make sure that the performance is good. And also in the meantime, we have to prepare ourselves to be ready for the large scale deployment in the future. There's one good thing that happened that after we completed that graph database deployment is that our database team now is actually merged with our cloud team together under one team, under Greg Auto. So that integration actually, in my opinion, really empowers us to develop a next generation automated uh, uh, database orchestration solutions across multiple Kubernetes clusters. So it's not an easy journey. And we are still learning. We are still, you know, researching to find the right solutions. But we are quite op optimistic. And uh, personally, I do believe, just like we moved away from physical machine to virtual machine, probably let's say 50 years ago. In the future, I believe we will have more and more database running on the Kubernetes platform, because generally speaking, it is more economically efficient 
of the running the database on a Kubernetes platform than running it on a virtual machine platform. And also the Kubernetes technology itself provides a much better you know, self-healing capabilities than the virtual machine. So I really actually enjoyed my journey from like a traditional database engineering to be a cloud database engineer. Um, and I will keep learning it. And uh, I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm happy to be in this you know, transition. I'm now handing back my presentation back to Greg. Thanks everyone. All right, thanks, Charles. Um, so uh, real quick, just to wrap this up, um, distributed data on Kubernetes is real, it's here. You heard uh, how we're able to take uh, uh, developer journeys from months down to minutes. Uh, and then you also heard from Charles, like where we literally you know, put structure we have in our, our one organization, our cloud native, uh, teams as well as our as well as our data team. So blending those two worlds together uh, structurally within our company, um, lots of opportunities. We're learning a lot. Uh, we really want to hear from uh, you know folks in the community. So please reach out to us uh, on Slack. We'll provide the presentation. Uh, but we are in the DOKC community, uh, so definitely don't be shy. Reach out to us. And last but not least, do do not forget the humans. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>